Let's go over a career roadmap for an SOC analyst. Starting off as a complete beginner, as someone who is trying to get into an SOC analyst role, let's say you're someone who has no previous cybersecurity or IT experience. SOC analysts are analysts who work in a security operations center, which is typically going to be on the defensive side or the blue team side of cybersecurity teams. The SOC covers everything from incident response triaging, threat analysts or threat hunting, which are the primary individual contributor roles or IC roles in the SOC, along with an SOC manager, who is typically going to be overseeing all the operations inside the security operations center. The best way to get an idea of the experience of working in an SOC is by going through an SOC simulation. There are lots of different tools out there for this. In fact, if you have the technical background, you can create your own SOC simulation where you're personally setting up all the monitoring and triaging software that a typical SOC would have, obviously not as in-depth as a real world scenario, but there are popular SOC simulations like Let's Defend.io, which is a popular platform to get some experience on what an SOC analyst actually does because they set up things like alerting, SIEMs, log analysis, having an internal inbox. It really is just trying to get as close as possible to a real world scenario of the experience of working in an SOC and of course also getting to use some of the tools that an SOC analyst would typically use on the job. Getting this hands-on experience on your resume as well as any cybersecurity programs or boot camps a great one to start off with is with the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate on Coursera, which I have linked in my description below. This will teach you cybersecurity foundations that you'll need for an SOC or security analyst role, which by the way, sometimes a security analyst and SOC analyst can be used interchangeably, but other times they may be completely different roles. Another thing that you can do to get those relevant skills on your resume for an SOC analyst role is by going on SOC analyst shop listings and looking for any repeated skills or qualifications that multiple companies are looking for and trying to get those skills on your resume, especially because a lot of the tools that security teams use in an organization can also have a high chance of that tool having a community edition or free edition or maybe it's just an open source tool that anyone can use for their personal projects. And that's a great way to get that hands-on experience using that tool. So when you go into future interviews, you're able to talk about the projects that you've used those tools in, as well as of course, any simulation projects that you've worked on. Next up is certifications. Personally, the certification that I recommend the most for entry-level cybersecurity professionals is the CompTIA Security Plus certification. I've created multiple videos talking about the certification on how I passed as well as whether or not it will be worth it for you, comparing the Security Plus along with the A Plus certification. So definitely check those videos out linked in my description if any of those are relevant to you. But essentially it's a very foundational security certification that covers a very broad range of cybersecurity vocabulary and foundational concepts that you'll need to know going into those cybersecurity interviews and your first job in cybersecurity. And if you decide to take the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate on Coursera, that certificate program actually also gives you a discount voucher to take your Security Plus certification exam. And I really think having both of those things on your resume will be a great help when you're starting to apply for jobs. Another potential certification to look into is the CSA certification by the EC Council, which is the Certified SOC Analyst Certification. This certification is specifically meant for Tier 1 and Tier 2 SOC analysts, so for any SOC analysts who are entry level or intermediate level in their careers. As part of the CSA certification, you'll be covering things like centralized log management, SIEMs, identifying IOCs or indicators of compromise, analyzing and monitoring logs across various different sources, IDS versus IPS, endpoint protection, servers, as well as of course the incident response process. Whatever certification that you decide to do, I think having at least one entry level certification on your resume when you start applying is going to be really helpful in boosting your odds of getting to that interview stage and actually connecting with the hiring manager. So once you've gotten to this point, the next step is going over the three tiers of SOC analyst roles. You can kind of think of these consecutively where you start off at tier one and then you go up to tier two and tier three analysts. Tier one is typically the most junior and it is the triage level. Tier two is the incident response level or the investigation level. And then tier three is focused on threat hunting and more advanced analyst responsibilities. As part of the job for a tier one SOC analyst, you'll be focusing on triaging security incidents. And based on the information that you have from logs, various different sources, you'll be assigning a severity level to the incident. Another part of your job may also be understanding and determining what the scope of the incident actually is 
who does it affect, what assets does it affect, as well as the impact of the incident on any data, users, or customers. This is typically where many analysts will spend their early career basically learning the ropes of the types of incidents that come in, what the data sources are, as well as the initial response and containment of an incident. A big part of your day job may be to monitor logs for any anomalies or suspicious events or actions from other users, whether it be employees or external customers. If there is something that seems fishy or suspicious, then an incident will be created, and if it's not something small enough that can be resolved at the tier 1 SOC analyst level, then it will get escalated to a tier 2 analyst. Tier 2 analysts are focused specifically on investigating security incidents, analyzing for and understanding root causes through analyzing logs, network traffic, as well as finally providing a detailed incident response report to upper management and any other security teams or stakeholders that may need that information for future audits or customer communications. They'll also be the ones providing any recommendations for remediating the effects and the impacts of the security incident. Up next is tier 3, which is threat hunting level or the more advanced SOC analyst level in a security operations center. Their job is to review any vulnerabilities and asset data to cover more complex threats that may be threatening your organization's environment. Specifically, these are going to be for security issues that may have bypassed the security controls and alerts that the SOC team already has set up, hence the name of Tier 3 Analyst Threat Hunters. Tier 3 Analysts may also be responsible for providing any detailed intelligence reports, as well as presenting this information to senior leadership or SLT teams, where the leadership of the security organization will take this information and include it in any future or long-term vision or plans that they have for future projects. So now that we've covered the three tiers of an SOC, besides an SOC manager who oversees the analysts within the SOC, another thing to think about is the fact that not every company has an SOC built in-house. For example, some companies may have an external SOC where they essentially contract out their SOC team and there are companies out there that are specifically running 24-7 SOCs for other organizations who may not be big enough to have an SOC team or they don't have the bandwidth or resources to manage one in-house. And this will also make a difference in what the SOC SOC team may do when a certain scenario comes up, as well as the depth of knowledge and information that the SOC has. For example, an internal SOC team is typically going to have a lot more background and knowledge about the company's internal architecture, where they may be able to connect with the relevant stakeholders and teams more quickly, or be able to directly access where a certain telemetry is coming from or sourced from, which can in turn save more time when handling incidents. But an external SOC team may have a more broader playbook for handling incidents, and they may use this playbook as an overarching guide for all incidents that happen for any other customers, but that may also provide them more insight into the types of vulnerabilities that are happening across a specific sector. And if a certain vulnerability is targeting multiple different companies in a specific sector, then the external SOC may be able to prevent certain types of attacks from happening that they may already be aware of that an internal SOC team may not have insight into. So at the end of the day, it all really is just some give and take. And when you're applying to SOC analyst roles, you should keep in mind the two types of SOC teams that are out there and whether or not you want to work for a specific company's SOC team or for an organization that is an SOC team for multiple different companies potentially in a specific sector or multiple sectors. Now, when it comes to specialized roles, this is really where you have a lot more freedom to choose where you want to go if you decide that you want to move on from SOC analyst roles into more specialized roles like red teaming, digital forensics, maybe even governance risk and compliance. Because SOC analysts work on the front lines of every security team, they essentially know the ins and outs of the different vulnerabilities and incidents that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can in turn take these foundational concepts and experience to any future roles you may want to go into. For example, if you realize that maybe while you're working in an SOC analyst role, one of your favorite aspects of it was thinking through logs or network traffic or, or down in the nitty gritty of telemetry of what happened in an actual incident. And maybe you specifically want to focus on digital forensics. There are forensics investigation teams especially for bigger organizations like financial institutions and government institutions that will have teams dedicated to forensics. And because that role is more specialized, you may be able to learn more as well as get more niche certifications for that specific career route that you want to go down. This is another reason why SOC analysts and security analysts are great roles to get started with your cybersecurity career because you touch so many different areas 
and you can also use that to then pinpoint what specific route or career path that you want to go into after you've kind of graduated from that SOC analyst role. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully this video was helpful to you in describing some of the functions of an SOC and what they do, as well as the career path and roadmap that you may be going down yourself. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and any future video topics that you may want to see from me in the future. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!